Okay, here we are. I've got my palette here with the resin sort of halfway through the wells. And I'm gonna just lay this plastic on top. See over I've I've left these overnight. I poured them last night around uh, I don't know eight o'clock or so. So and it's now ten in the morning. It still kind of lifts up a bit when you hope you can see that. Um yeah, it still lifts up um when you touch it, but it's firm enough that it's not gonna allow the plastic pieces here to sink in. And um, so you just add these however many or few you feel like. I kind of like a lot. The I have tried it with less and it's kind of not as remarkable. I don't know. That was such a brilliant move that uh, TC Beads came up with. Pretty, that was pretty sweet. She figured this out. I didn't even know. Oops! I didn't even know this stuff existed um, because it's in the kids section, um, like the kids crafty kind of part of the craft store, and I never really go there, um, even though I have a kid. <laughs> Um, I just let her use my stuff that I get from the art section of, the, like, the fine art section. She's a touch spoiled because she likes, you know, nice acrylic paint. Not really the tempera stuff. Unless she's in a crazy mood and she likes to do finger paints or something. So, I'm just going to... This. And you'll see it's been sitting for a good 15 minutes. It's still got bubbles, this stuff. So that's kind of the frustrating bit about it, is that it's still a touch bubbly. I know that most of the time the bubbles come up and pop on their own. But it's still, you know, frustrating. Because, you know, you mix it and you try your hardest not to get any air in there when you're mixing, but you in inevitably do. <laughs> there. And uh, I've seen TC beads do hers with, um, she backs them with white sometimes, white paint. Um, I'll show you mine that I did with black, just a medium, like a, I think it's called, where is it? Oh, it's a golden brand acrylic paint. It's nice. It comes in a metal tube, that kind of tube that you squeeze. And it's uh, Mars black. And it's fullest opacity, so it's nice and opaque and it covers quite nicely. I like that look, personally. Okay, so I've got the trays full. Now we can just sit there and let them do their thing. But here is one. I hope you can see it nicely. Um, it's the same cello glitter um, backed with Mars Black paint. It's just one coat, so there's brush strokes. I will be putting another coat on as soon as it dries. Um, brilliant move. <laughs> Don't mind that. That was just the cat <laughs> getting into something over there. Um, 
yeah, these are absolutely brilliant. I love you, TC. You are magnificent. Um, here's an example of bubbles on a bird stamp. It's kind of sad. At the same time, I've kind of learned to embrace the fine bubbles like that. They kind of look frosty. I don't know. Maybe I'm just delusional. I know that bubbles are not coveted, but when they happen, you know, you got to embrace stuff. Here, I just cut up whatever was left of the stamps that I had from China, from that big order that I got, and just dumped all the little scraps in. Because I love to reuse as much as I can, throw away as little as I can. These ones, same idea. Um, the rings that I made, um, where's one that, like this ring, for example, that's got the birds cut out in positive and put in there with the resin and the microbeads. I took the stamp that they came from and uh, put it in the in the paint palette wells and uh, cast some resin over it. And then I painted the back black. So now you've got the negative image of the bird flying, which is kind of cool. It's like a almost like a statement about environmentalism. Uh, not that I'm, you know, hugely environmentalist, but I do like to reuse and stuff as much as I can. So here's the bird, this bird, the, the blue and the orange one, came from this stamp. So I threw nothing away in this process. It was pretty cool. So I'm going to just go ahead and cast the rest of my, my molds. like these ones and then it will be time to move on to the next thing whatever the next thing will be Alrighty, I'm back with uh, some cured resin and also my kind of commentary on uh, the results of this resin these happen to be some of those cute faux opals that um, TC beads very cleverly and astutely came up with. Um, I'm going to try a different color um, backing for them than just the black or the white. I think I'm going to try a very soft pink um, because there is such thing as pink opal. Okay. So I've mixed my paints um, for this soft pink kind of experimental backing for um, faux opals. I've got Martha Stewart, I think it's, uh, it's high gloss, wedding cake is the color. And I've got Martha Stewart satin um, habanero red. It's a nice bright primary red. That's why I got it. And I used a ton of white and very, very little red <laughs> to do this because I wanted it very soft. And I'm just going to paint the backs. And let's see what happens. Well, it's still pretty white looking, but that's okay. I can always add red for the next coat, because I always find that they need two coats of paint when you do this. So, paint, 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 paint. meant to kind of highlight the um, the iridescence of of uh, some of the plastic shards that are there they have uh, they're quite iridescent I don't know if any of you have seen pink opal but it's really really pretty it doesn't have 
the same iridescence, I guess, as dark opal, but whatever. That's the thing about resin, is you can live in a fantasy world. It's great. All right. <clears throat> now we can <coughs> take two. All right. Now we can do our second coat, because these are dry enough now the white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a little bit more red. And I'm talking minute amounts of red. Red is a very strong primary color. So it doesn't take much to change your white. Like look at how much pinker that is. See? Like it's a ton pinker now than what I used to do the first coat. So I think this will be strong enough to kind of show through for us. Cat fur. It's a little better. A little bit. It at least gets the brush strokes out. That's the main objective. Cat has been up here. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's okay. This one I would die anyway. Makes a, oops, makes a subtle difference. It's not a huge difference, but okay. So I think my overall verdict is that I'm not a huge fan of this resin um, because I cast. Some stuff, and it's fine. Like, here's one of the necklaces I made um, with the bottle caps. I made two of them. I showed you in a previous video about the other one. Um, this casting turned out okay. But, and same with the faux, these um, egg faux opals. They turned out okay. But um, I used a mold that came in a kit the starter kit with this resin. I mix the resin according to, you know, all the instructions and it's been like three days and I could still bend it. Like it's it's not gonna set at this point. Same with these really cool, they were gonna be awesome um, eggs with my beaded beads in them. Trash, I have to throw them away now. Um, I did some cool, these were going to be awesome for Halloween. They were candy corn candies, egg shaped. Garbage. I have to throw them away. And I did a ring, as you may recall. Now, some of this problem is from the mold that I made. I won't, you know, go trash talking that. Um, I guess the liquid latex that I used is not appropriate for. Um, for this application because the top of the mold made this happen. 
So, but if you feel the resin, you can feel the different castings that I did. And the first one down here to about kind of up here where the, the orange stops is fine. That's totally cured normally. But then this isn't cured normally. It's soft. It's a little bit on the squishy side. Um, these guys. Like, look at that. So, I mean, of all the casting that I did, I would say about a third of it is usable. The rest of it is is not. So, I'm kind of annoyed. Um, like, look at all the look at all the stuff I got to throw away. And you know, this stuff isn't exactly cheap or anything. So, I'm kind of irritated with that. So, um, if anyone else out there has had any more better success than me, then um, feel free to let me know if I did something wrong. But I, I, I seriously, I followed the direction. I mixed according to the, the correct ratio. I let it sit there for a while, like 15 minutes. Um, and I let it cure for about 48 hours before trying to do any kind of demolding. So... Yeah, it's really weird that I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven egg shaped cabs out of my last casting session. And I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen potentially awesome cabs that I gotta throw away. Like, the heck is that about? So, yeah, not happy. That's my verdict. So. Better luck next time. Thanks. Bye.